Some of our viewers have sent in some requests to try to stay sane. How to handle quarantine kids stuck at home. This request came in during the COVID-19 pandemic where everybody was quarantined at home together, but I think there's some application to other times when you're home with the kids for a short time or maybe for an extended period of time. Kids are people too, and they operate according to basic principles that are not too hard to figure out. So I think the first thing that I would suggest is that you have some kind of a schedule or plan. Most people will do better when they expect what's coming, when they know how to anticipate what's next. So have a little bit of a schedule, especially if you want to do some educational experiences or homeschooling. Have some kind of a visual representation of it. One of the moms I was working with in one of our parent coaching groups had this brilliant idea to color coordinate and code basically a schedule that she, she posted up on her wall. And it had a green chunk, for example, where we're going to do a learning experience without technology. Awesome. And it, it was blocked out on the day so the kids knew when it was going to start, when it was going to end. And incidentally, Psychologically, having a start and an end really helps you to wrap your head around whatever you're doing because it gives you an exit strategy. If you just say, hey, we're going to do homeschool at nine o'clock, that's a little harder to accept for a child's mind than to say, hey, we're going to do our non-technology educational experience from nine to 10.15. Start time, end time and whatever it is you're doing in between. If you color code those for the kids and you can show them a visual representation of what's going on, that's even better. Great idea. We all get a little stir crazy when we're inside for too long, so get outside. Go outside, walk around, get a little bit of air. This is good for the kids, it's good for mom and dad. You know, there's a lot of psychological benefits for being outside. So get outside and walk around. Anytime we're working with kids, or other people for that matter, they want to feel that they have some level of control or input about what's going to happen. Give them a chance to have their input. Get the feedback from the kids about what it is that they want to do, what they'd like to see happen, what's exciting for them, and incorporate that into the schedule or the plan that you've made up. Another really great reason to engage the kids in the plan is that it teaches them a life skill. It, you're going to have times, for example, when the kids say, I'm bored. Do you ever get that one? Probably not you. But when kids say that, I want them to have the resources, the personal resources to handle that and to come up with something that they can do. So instead of deferring to the parent all the time or the grown-ups in their life, they can go to their own personal psychological resources and figure out what to do. Come up with some good ideas for that. Engage the kids in the plan. Now remember, at the time of this filming, there were a lot of restrictions going on in our world about social contact. They call it social distancing, and it's a strategy that is used to combat a contagious pathogen. In this case, it was COVID-19, the coronavirus. There might be other restrictions to different things that you can do. But what I want to do is create a little bit of a culture here where we start asking the question, how can I, instead of just saying, well, I can't do this or that. Connecting with other people, for example. In fact, I really don't like the term social distancing. I prefer physical distancing because we are social creatures. We can connect with other people. I'm connecting with you right now, here, today. And we're not in the same room, are we? No, I'm on your device. And that's fine. It's one way that we can connect. You can do this live too. I've got grandkids 
and I love to connect with them through FaceTime or social media. And we can do this live. This is especially important to me and Vicki because our grandkids don't even live in the same part of the country. They're in a completely different state. We'd have to get on an airplane to go see them physically. And there are times when that's not a possibility, whether it's from a pandemic or just simply the cost or time that is required to make that happen. We can pull up our device and have contact with them immediately. And that is so fun because when we see our kids, they immediately recognize us. We already have a relationship with them. It's just a really great way to stay connected. Do this with your kids. If you're looking for something to fill the time, connect. Connect through technology to some loved ones. What do all of these things have in common? Really what we're doing is creating a culture together with our kids and our family about what we can do instead of focusing on what we can't do. A few years ago when I was having an interview with my friend Chad Hymas. Chad is one of the most popular professional speakers on the planet. And part of his story involves an accident in which he had three of the vertebrae in his neck were, were fractured, crushed, when a bale of hay, a one-ton bale of hay, fell on his head. And he was in the hospital experiencing some predictable emotional responses to this kind of an accident, feeling sorry for himself, really, in a lot of ways. And Chad shared with me that that depression was becoming overwhelming until he made the shift. See, he was focusing on what he couldn't do. And whether it's from an accident or a pandemic or whatever, when we focus on what we can't do, it's depressing. The shift came for him when Chad decided, I've got to think about what I can do, what I'm able to do still, how I can adapt, what I can do differently. It's not that I can't do things, it's that I need to do those things differently. And that's the culture, that's the mentality that will help us when we're together in a place where we can't do what we're normally used to doing. Well, what can we do? See how much more useful that is? There really are a lot of things we can do. And if you're looking for resources, you might not have known that we have an entire collection of resources available for you at drpauljenkins.com. Head over there right now and get engaged in our positive community. Alone, alone. Her head was down, face locked onto the phone.